Gotta go get some lumber out of the shed. Those are ones I want right there. Okay, three of those should do it. Um, I'm using these because, first of all, I have them. And second of all, they're nice and straight and they're dry and they're not going to twist up on me and throw everything out of alignment, which is important for this. picked out three. Those are all that I'm willing to spare for this. Normally, if this machine was going to be something that I would keep, I would build it at a steel angle, all these parts, just to make sure that it's stable alignment. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking to see which ones of the three are the straightest. These have a slight twist, so what I'm doing with the hand plane is I'm just taking down the edges that will make it sit flat. These are the only parts that have to be really straight and flat, so I'm going to take the time to do that now. That feels pretty good. Then I'm going to cut off one edge, move the fence over, cut a little bit off the other side, and then I can turn the stock on edge and cut the bottom and then the top. It takes several shallow passes, flipping the wood each time to get rid of all the twists and warps. I could do this faster, I guess, if I had a jointer, but I don't have one. Okay, these pieces are all straightened up and ready for me to work with. I kind of went back on what I said in the first video. I sat down with SketchUp and I drew up some basic plans. And that was mainly to work out the details for the frame. I could have done it on the fly type thing, but I would have probably wasted time, you know, sit down for a couple hours, plan things out, and it saves time during the build. So here are the frame pieces that hold the wheels in. And on one end, the drive wheel is held pretty much stationary. I'm going to mark those out eight and a half inches from the end. The first one I'm going to drill to five eight, so the axle fits right in there neatly. But the other one I'm going to drill oversized, I'm going to drill that one inch, and that will give me room to adjust the wheel. Okay, I've got the one inch hole there. I need a piece of plywood to make an adjustment collar, you could say. This is gonna have a 5 8 inch hole in it, and it's gonna bolt right onto that frame member, and I'll be able to move the collar around to adjust the wheel. You know, I say this build is fast and dirty, and in relative terms it is, because I'm not going to the lengths that I would if this was a permanent build, 
but also you need to realize that even something that's fast and dirty on this scale takes a long time. Here's the plywood block, 5 8 inch hole here and half inch holes over here. It's going to slip onto the shaft. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it in place and then I'm going to drill half inch holes through the frame member as well. And that'll be for the bolts that hold the plywood block in place. Okay, more threaded rod. Cut to length and washers and nuts. I made the holes, these are 3 8 the threaded rod. I made the holes half inch to give me a lot of leeway here to move this around to adjust it. Although I don't think I'll need it. It's better to have it, you know, better to build it in than try to get it afterwards. After I get this all put together and adjusted with the blade on it, tension, the whole works, I'll drive a couple of screws, maybe four screws through this plywood into the lumber to lock that in position. It won't move, so it won't be just relying on the bolts. Well, I've got the wheel put back in, tied up against the frame members. I can get a measurement for how long the two cross pieces that go in here need to be. I'm going to check the end to make sure it's square and that looks good. I took the time to pull that side off and put the belt in now that's uh, just to have it there. None of this is getting glued together. I'm going to be just screwing it off. That really doesn't sound good, John. I'll be screwing it all together. How's that? Better. Now up here at the other end, it's a little more tricky. This wheel <clears throat> has to be able to move back and forth to put tension on the blade. It also has to be able to tilt like that so that I can adjust the tracking. And I thought about that long and hard, but I came up with a fairly simple way of doing it. And it starts with me drilling slotted holes here in these members that the shaft will fit completely through and allow it to move back and forth. Would have been a bit easier to drill these out on the drill press. I already knew the measurements, but I had to double check it here. Anyways, I can do it by hand just as easily. These don't have to be precise. They just need to let the shaft move. Just dropped the wheel off the edge of the table saw workbench here and sustained a little bit of damage, but looks like it's still pretty good. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, yeah, if you were waiting for the dirty part, this is it. Okay, I made these things right here. And what they do is they lock into the shaft on the front wheel. We'll call it the top wheel because it's the one that, you know, you adjust. And um, it moves back and forth. To move back and forth, I cut these rabbits in here. I also cut out these things right here, and they fit right in there. And the idea there is that this will screw onto that. That'll screw onto the thing. This thing will be free to slide back and forth. These are actually the guides. And I got to put those together now. Uh, 
Now the screws are a bit long, but that's not a big deal. I'll just cut those off on the table saw. Very nearly done with these now. I drilled a one inch hole in here and then I flattened the end for a washer. And once again, I've got three eighths inch threaded rod and I've shoved it in here and I put a nut on it. And what that'll do is it'll pull on it and that won't come apart pretty good. I've already put that one together. I'm just gonna slip this one in and put a nut on it. Well, it's getting pretty late in the day, but I really want to get this put on and see how it you know, works. Take this side of the frame off again. See how easy that is? Beautiful. Now, this goes here. And the wheel, I'm pretty sure the wheel goes, yeah, the wheel goes here. So it's in the hole through the thing. Got it. Then the other one goes on. Or no, this goes on the outside. So we'll put the frame back on. Like so. You can see where this is going now, right? You can see, look, this goes on the outside like that, and it, you know, the whole thing moves. These parts are the guides, and they go on next. They're just going to screw onto the frame like that, and they'll allow this to move back and forth. All right? Yeah. Okay, well, I got that on, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Look what I did. Wrong way. All right, that's more like it.